In this video, I'm going to show you how to build customized forms in Go High Level. So check this out. Once you're in high level, you'll want to go into sites and then click onto forms and you'll be brought to the form builder that you're seeing right here right now. And so this is just a dummy account called like this video. And you can see I've got a couple of different forms in here and I went ahead and uh, just open them up so that you have a visualization of what these different types of forms could look like. So the first form we have right here is a schedule a call button form that you could add to any funnel as a simple opt-in. Next, we've got a simple lead magnet form with first name and email address where you could, uh, once they submit the form, give them access to the lead magnet. And after that, we've got an internal form because forms don't always have to be external forms that are embedded on sites and funnels and all that good stuff, but they can actually be internal forms that you use for your sales meetings where during a sales meeting, you would fill in this form with the contacts, the prospects, the leads data, and you would say, hey, they showed, they didn't show, they were sold with this certain value. You could take internal notes that are not sent to the client, external notes that are sent in a recap email, and also, uh, yeah, choose if you wanna send that recap email and choose a follow-up date. So there's a lot of different use cases for forms. I just wanted to inspire right from the get-go different ideas on how forms could be used. And we'll have a look at some of these automations for this specific form here towards the end of this video as well. And just to show you that I'm not just talking about forms, but actually using them myself. This is um, on my, my own website for my own high level software. You could start a seven day free trial. And this is a two step order form. So it's not exactly the forms that we're looking at right now, but a two step order form is nothing else than a form and another form, an uh, opt in form and a form for payments. So that's one form that I'm using and then this is a simple normal form right here on my website or right down below this link if you want to book a free group uh, coaching call with me you can use the link with this form down below and experience how I use forms within my own high level software. With that being said, let's go back to the form builder and let's add a new form. Once you click on add a new form, you can choose from templates. Let's check that out real fast. And so these are pre-configured templates that high level created that you can choose from for different industries, different niches, different use cases, and you can search. So we can type in insurance, for example, and you can see we've got a health insurance request form, a fine insurance coverage, commercial insurance request form. So definitely check out these templates and see if there's something that you like. I'm personally not the biggest fan of personalizing the form and trying to brand it and add these crazy logos and images to it. If it's simple and you wanna do it, you can, but I'm actually more of a fan of personalize, like embedding the form, and I'll show you how to do this in, in just a bit, but I'm more of a fan of embedding the form on a funnel page and then personalizing the funnel page in the background because it's a lot more flexible, a lot more customizable. You can uh, adjust the link of the form a lot more flexible as well. And um, and then leaving the form as simple and as basic as, as you want it to be pretty much. So you can decide for yourself if you wanna use one of these templates, but again, I personally advise just keeping the form simple, embedding it on a funnel, and then ch adjusting and personalizing the background of the funnel. So let's go ahead and X out of here and not use a template. Let's click on add a form again and let's just start from scratch. And even if you select that option, you can see you've got a solid draft of a form right here. And once you click on first name, you could keep first name, you could delete first name. Once you click on email, you could keep it, delete it. But really, usually you have some sort of name field, phone number, email, depending on what kind of data you want. And so right from the get-go, if we wanna get first name back, we just have to click on add form element and you can see we could pull in, drag and drop over full name, first name. We've got a lot of pre-configured custom fields within high level that we can use. So all of these fields that you're seeing here, they're called custom fields they're, and custom fields are personalized towards that person. So my first name is gonna be different than your first name. So custom fields are always dependent on the person and they change depending on the person that looks at them. And if you wanted to find custom fields within the software, you would pretty much go back into the general area. You would click on the settings and then right down here, you've got custom fields. And these are all the custom fields that are standard and the ones that you created specifically. And the main 
it's a little, or I was very confused when I started using high level three years ago. What's the difference between custom fields and custom values? Custom fields change from person to person. So my first name again is different than your first name, your phone or my, my phone number. Whereas custom values, they don't change depending on who's looking at them. So if you put in a custom value into an email on a, on a landing page onto whatever, it would be the same. So a good custom value would be the business's address, the business owner's name, the, the user's name kind of. So things that are always the same, that won't change depending on who's looking at it, those are good custom values. Now that we're back in the form builder, we can click up here and rename our form and say, hey, this is my uh, special form and it's for special people. And one of my models within high level is always go fast and break shit. You can't be afraid of dragging and dropping and deleting things, okay? So we need to go fast, we need to build, we need to do, do, do. And imperfect action is always better than perfect plan that's never executed. So part of imperfect action and going fast is just dragging and dropping things around, seeing what happens once you do it. So let's check out collect payment. And boom, you can see we've got this payment option right here where we could choose an amount, put in our credit card details and collect payment with this form. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but I would probably use a two-step order form or something like that on a funnel instead of on this form. And that's the thing within high level. You've always got multiple options, multiple solutions for one problem. It just really depends on how fast you want to go. What's the quality you want to you want to use if you're investing money or, you know, what's your budget. So depending on your problem, there's always multiple solutions and multiple ways to solve it. Once we scroll down, we've also got an address um, pre-configured field right here for your, your, your location details pretty much. And once we're here, you can see that you can create custom fields within the form builder itself. And so this is kind of new and I'm not the biggest fan of this, to be honest. So you could drag and drop over a text box over here and kind of recreate and create your own custom field from right within here. I'm personally, just because I've been using the software for a little bit longer, used to this old way of going to this tab up here called custom fields and adding a custom field this way. So single line, text input, single line, multi-line, text box, um, choosing options like drop down, drop down, uh, single, multiple, radio select, all of this stuff. Once you look at this here and we X back out of here and go back to quick add, it's pretty much the options that we have here with text. Uh, choice elements like this, the radio select. So that's pretty much duplicated. Like they, they just wanted to make it easier for people. But I would probably recommend just going back here to custom fields. But really, the way if you want to add custom fields from up here with those uh, the, these, these pre-configured ones kind of, and then click on them and go to advanced settings and rename the custom field from within here, you could. But again, I'm more used to going back here to custom fields, clicking on this add button, deciding, hey, is this a drop down single? Okay, let's hit next here then. And let's give this field a name and let's call this credit score, for example. Let's say you need to capture the credit score of a person and it's a, again, a drop down menu. And uh, let's say it's a, a single option. So you can only have one of these choices, obviously for a credit score. And let's say our credit score is less then 700 let's add an option and let's say it's more than 700 so let's say that's our criteria is your credit score above or below 700 and then yeah so within creating this custom field on this back end we gave it a name we've got the, the 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 unique value the unique key of this credit score as well and we've got the options and we can hit save oh we do have to add it to a group and so these groups that show up right here, if we go back into the software and we go into the CRM part, we'll see what kind of CRM. Uh, yeah, I've got <laughs> I've got dummy data from um, from Game of Thrones in here still. So let's go into Brand Stark and have a look at their layout of their contact data in the CRM part. And you can see we've got these folders, contact, general info, additional info, status update and review info. And once we go back to this section, this, this group is pretty much where do we want to group it within the CRM? This custom field, do we want to store it under general info or do we want to store it under additional info 
or under status update information. So again, all of these fields here, all they are are custom fields. And whether you store this custom field on a form and the prospect fills it out through the form like this right here, uh, like what, we're, we're, what we've been doing, or you just manually fill it out within the CRM, just like I'm doing right now, it doesn't make a difference as long as the, the information is, is stored properly and you know what kind of automations that will trigger on the back end. So for this form, let's go ahead and just say, hey, I wanna store this under additional info. And again, we can always change it and we'll hit save. The name of that field was called credit score. So now when I'm still under custom fields and I search for credit score, you can see it's under the group uh, additional info. And now I can drag and drop that field over and if we go ahead and view this form, that's always a, a good thing to do because while you're building it out, you can see I can't really see the options here. I can just see this, this button, but I can't really, I can't see what the drop down options are. And so the easiest way to do that is to just click integrate up here and copy the form link so that we can just view this form and see what it looks like and populates as in real life. And so obviously I added a lot of dummy stuff and uh, just to showcase to you guys again, to go fast and just build, 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 and not be afraid of breaking things. Like the, as soon as you break something in high level, there's always a way to fix it. And I think there's that fear of pushing the wrong button, but that's not a fear. You need to get over that fear and you need to build faster. So within credit score, now that we are viewing the form, we can pretty much see the two options uh, that we've created. And I think that looks pretty good. If we wanted to view those options somewhere else, we could also go back into settings. We could go into custom fields and we could search for that field credit score. There it is. We can select it. We could delete it. We could move it to a different group because right now I think it was under additional info or something. So if we wanted to group it somewhere else, we could group it somewhere else, but we're actually going to cancel that and we're just gonna go ahead and click on edit here and that's pretty much so that like you need to know where this custom field section is and you need to understand that connection between forms custom fields the crm part the contact level of these custom fields and um, then i think that'll all make sense and connect the way that i just showed you guys because now if we wanted to edit this field we can always click on add an option and we could add multiple options down here and once we hit save and update the form those options should also populate right here. Let's give that a quick check. Let's give it a little refresh right here. Sometimes it does take a little bit of time, but here we go. These new fields are already populating right here. And so if you have any questions, cause I know that was a little bit faster, um, just comment them down below and let me know. I do offer daily group coaching calls for high level. As you can see, I've got my own high level SaaS. So there's a lot of free options down below this video. I'm always happy to help and I'll put my email down below as well. So back in the form builder, this pop-up again pops up once you hit integrate. And basically you don't have to use this form on a high level funnel or website. You could also integrate it or embed it on a Wix website, on a WordPress website. And how you would do that is with this embed code. So you would decide, hey, this is how I want this form to pop up. Usually the most typical ones are either inline or pop-up. And you would say, you know, show after scrolling, always show, activate on the blah, blah, blah's visit. Um, I would probably just do always show, always activated and never deactivate. But depending on how you choose these toggles, it'll change this embed code. And once you've made your selections, you would copy the embed code and just to visualize kind of what that looks like. It's kind of code like this. So it's an iframe with the width, the the trigger type that you guys just selected and all it does once you change those toggles it just changes the text within here and it's like an easy way to build uh, custom code for forms so again if you're using a different platform you can take this code and embed it on that different platform as well but the most typical way to do it like you you guys pretty much saw i just copied this form link and i've got my form right here so this this works this form will work it will trigger, it will do everything uh, that it needs to do. And once it's filled in and somebody fills in their data and hits the submit button, checks this consent box, then that data will flow into the CRM. So, you know, uh, that took me five minutes. It could take me two minutes to set this up and have a new form to capture leads from Instagram, 
uh, from Facebook, from wherever you want, from my website. So that's pretty easy, but I think it's kind of uh, good to personalize the background and embed this form on a funnel. So let's just go back into the form. Let's um, just close it out here. Again, the name of the form here is my special form. So let's hit save here. And let me just briefly show you how easy it can be to embed this form on a funnel. So once we're under funnels, we'll actually just create a new funnel and we'll select a funnel from a template. Because once we have this beautiful template, uh, I kind of like this design. So let's just go ahead and choose this design. Let's hit continue and load this template into our funnel repertoire here. And we're just going to take that simple form that we just created and just embed it onto this funnel template. So again, my motto is let's go fast and uh, let's break shit. So let's go fast and embed this funnel right here. And we've got this image right here and we could have this image there and we could keep it there, but we could also just add an element and put the form right above there. So let's go ahead and add the form. Let's select the my special form right here. And voila, now we've got some simple text on the left with a cool design and we've got the form on the right. Now again, I know that this isn't perfect. I know that we've got some ugly, ugly fields here. We've got this payment option here, but really once you start dragging and dropping those form fields from one side to the other and you decide what the, the form is supposed to look like, it's very easy to just go in and delete and adjust the form. But that's how easy it can be to take a form, embed it onto a funnel, and have a nice looking environment where your leads can submit their data. And what's awesome about embedding these forms on these funnels is that you can actually connect your domain to the funnel builder, to the software, and you can choose a personalized domain for it and keep it as short and as simple as you like. Because if you just integrate the normal form and just take it from the form builder, it'll have some sort of link very similar to this one right here. It can still, this part can still be personalized, but uh, it's just not going to be able, you're not going to be able to personalize this, this slug at the end uh, a lot. Whereas if you embed it on a funnel, you can see this is a super short link right here. And it's pretty much just a funnel page with a form on it. Super, super simple. And um, now the domain of this is just go smarterflow.com slash free. So super easy. That's why I always, again, highly recommend just taking a funnel page, having some simple template like my template right here, blue and blue, you know, like it's nothing crazy embedding a form and capturing those leads, capturing those data. So let me know if you have any questions. That was it for today's tutorial, how to build customized forms and go high level. I did also just record a video on form automations. So if you want to learn what to happens after the form, how do I take that power of high level automations and integrate it and connect it to the form, then check out this video. And that video will basically demonstrate these automations that I have right here. So that once a form is submitted, we trigger the correct actions. We wait, we add system notes. We decide based on the custom fields that are used in the form, what kind of path and what kind of information data we want to trigger. So very, very powerful. Again, that's that last video on my channel right now. So check that out. I'll have a hover card so that you can click on it easily as well. If you have any questions, shoot them into the comments, shoot me an email. I love to create these videos and I love helping people make the most out of go high level. So I hope you have a beautiful day and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.